Chapter 9, Cell Respiration, Harvesting Chemical Energy The food that you eat every day, convert it into chemical energy. That's the thing we're going to talk about today. Hello, how are you doing? This is Indra. And today I'm going to talk about cell respiration in cellular level. And someone say, where does cellular respiration occur? They don't be confused, say mitochondria. Oh, wait a minute. It's in plant or animals? No, it's in both. Cell respiration occurs in both. But in the case of animal, we can see photosynthesis. But in the case of plant, we can see photosynthesis and cell respiration both. And cell respiration and photosynthesis are closely related with each other. Without one, another impossible. Okay? And I got this PowerPoint from Campbell and Jenry's uh, biology book uh, from 8th edition. And I am very thankful to them. Okay, let's uh, move on here. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, what I'm going to cover on this lecture. Okay, so first thing uh, is I'm going to explain is the redox reaction. Uh, have you ever heard oil rig, O I L R O G, right? So oxidation reduction reaction. So gain of electron, loss of electron, what happened during that process. I'm going to talk about that briefly in a few moments. Next, I'm going to talk about three stages of cell respiration. Uh, those are glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and the last one, electron transport chain or chemiosmosis. Okay, I'm going to talk about those. And I'm going to explain the role of electron transport chain here because most of the ATP that we produce is during the electron transport chain. So very important process. And I'm going to explain when and how res uh, respiratory electron transport chain creates a proton gradient. So there is a transport of, a transport of proton also occur. Okay from matrix to the inner membrane. So those kind of thing we're going to talk here. And we, I'm going to cover some kind of anaerobic respirations and I'm going to talk about fermentation. Anaerobic and aerobic respiration has two distinct uh, differences. What I mean by that is aerobic means you need oxygen. Anaerobic means you don't need oxygen. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about those things. But uh, basically what I'm going to talk about today's lecture is the oxidation reduction reaction, the relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration, and finally glycolysis. And in my next lecture, I'm going to talk about the citric acid cycle and electron transport chain. Okay, let's move on here. The heading, look here, it says life is work. Yeah, we know that. Early in the morning, we got up for work, right? So we just get some food to eat and we just like ran. Just what, what does that mean? So we are getting energy from food to do something, right? To perform work. If you are hungry, then you're not going to perform well. And Maybe you sometimes face that time too. I know. So I, I faced that time when I was like hungry. I, I don't, it's like I, I want to just relax. I don't want to work nothing. So basically what I mean by if you want to work, you need energy. The energy is provided from the surrounding. You are the system. You're going to perform your task. But you need energy from surrounding. Okay. So the energy, getting energy is called endergonic process and giving energy is called exergonic process. So photosynthesis is endergonic or in chemistry you might sometimes talk about endothermic and exergonic is like exothermic means release energy. Okay so that's the very different thing two things we're going to discuss here. So uh, let's uh, uh, look 
this picture here, here is a panda. So the panda is getting energy from plant. The plant is stored energy in the form of starch, or you can say like glucose, okay, starch. Starch is the polysaccharide of glucose basically, right? So it is stored the energy, right? So the energy from plants is getting by this panda, okay? So it's going to transfer this energy into the in the form of chemical energy okay it digests that in its digestive system right so in the digestive system it digests that okay the digested things are are like um say sugar say some kind of monosaccharides okay i don't know what is that but it's gonna try it's gonna be like switch on to something right so that will transfer through your uh, blood vessels and to the tissue and from tissue to the cell and on the cell you have mitochondria mitochondria will perform cellular respiration okay that's a very good explanation okay now uh the herbivores the panda is herbivores because it depends on autotrophs autotrophs means they can produce their food themselves for the photosynthesis by photosynthesis plants can produce their own food so these are autotrophs and the herbivores means they depend on the grass they depend on plants and carnivores depends on herbivores right or maybe in uh maybe to autotrophs too there are some exceptions okay so omnivores carnivores herbivores these are the organisms which are related with each other very closely in this in the environment to to make the ecosystem organized okay so that's very important here okay let's i'm going to talk about the relationship between photosynthesis and uh cell respiration the light energy is coming from sun here okay sun provides what light energy okay this energy in the form of photon okay is coming from sun okay then the energy the light will absorb by the cellular organelle called chloroplast which is also only present in the case of plants okay chloroplast inside the chloroplast there is dna there is some like granum and some kind of like structure thylakoids right so you can see this here look these are green thing right these these are the acceptor for light energy and these are green why because uh, they have chlorophyll a chlorophyll b molecules and they have some xanthophyll and carotenoids, right? So what happens is when the light energy goes to there, it's going to absorb some kind of light, okay? So basically, I'm going to talk about two kinds of light here. Uh, the blue light, violet light. Okay, let's take two more, okay? Uh, red light. And finally, we have green light. Okay. So, which one gonna be more absorbed? Can you think about that? Well, probably you're gonna say, uh, this gonna be like more absorbed, the blue and violet light gonna be more absorbed, then red, then green. Yeah, you are right. Why you are right is, the chlorophyll already like green they're not gonna accept green lights okay so the green light gonna what happened gonna, what what's gonna happen to green light is they're gonna reflect back okay so they're not gonna accept green light if you put some plant in like green light they're not gonna grow they're not gonna do any photosynthesis so whole system gonna stop and the plants gonna die next you're gonna see plants turning yellow color that's the result of that so be sure when you plant your plants inside your home be careful there should be blue light or there should be violet light okay. if there is green light the plant not gonna work okay that's not gonna perform nothing so 
So green light not gonna be accepted by plants, okay? So that's why chlorophyll looks green or plants look green, right? Okay, another thing is uh, blue and violet light has more energy because their wavelength is less. And we know that uh, the relationship between uh, energy, that is E, okay, energy is H, F, right? Or you can just say that energy E equal to uh, H, which is Planck's constant, C, the velocity of light and wavelength, okay? So from this, what you can, what you can infer? The energy is directly proportional to the frequency of light, but energy is not directly proportional to the wavelength, it's inversely proportional. So what happened to the blue and uh, violet light is their wavelength is very what? Higher low, low. So their energy is more, right? So they have more energy. And in the case of green light, what happened is the wavelength is more than blue and violet. So energy is less. So it's not gonna give enough energy to carry out the photosynthesis. Basically that means that. And the red light is often called as good for plants after blue and violet because it absorbs that too, okay? That is uh, the process of receiving light. We just talk about, okay? It depends on the wavelength of the light. If there's like less wavelength, high energy, high, like more wavelength and less energy, okay? That's, that's the relationship. Just infer this uh, formula here, okay? Next, what are the products of photosynthesis? The main products of photosynthesis is organic molecules and oxygen. Oxygen is a byproduct. That oxygen we breathe, we inhale every day is from photosynthesis. So if plant is stuff photosynthesis, we're not gonna survive, right? So oxygen is basic needs for us okay so it produces organic molecules organic molecules like glucose okay so sugars okay those organic molecules finally needed by what the mitochondria to perform cellular work cellular respiration in the case of cellular respiration organic molecules and oxygen okay organic molecules and the oxygen are the main raw materials for cell respiration, okay? So the organic molecules in presence of oxygen, okay? So it's gonna carry out the reaction, but there's some excess on non cell respiration during glycolysis, you don't need oxygen. During fermentation, you don't need oxygen. Those are exceptions. We're gonna talk uh, at the end of this lecture. Not today, but tomorrow I'm gonna cover that, okay? So, the organic molecules and oxygen will accept by the mitochondria. The mitochondria has its own DNA. Mitochondria has some projections like finger-like projection here that is called cristae. And it has like outer membrane and it has inner membrane. And the mitochondria is present in both plant and animals. So both cellular species occurs in both plant and animal. So we can infer that. So what happened during this process is when organic molecules and oxygen, okay, oxygen uh, are present in the case of uh, the mitochondria, okay, let's say you breathe oxygen, so okay, you inhale oxygen, that oxygen gonna flow through hemoglobin and goes through like uh, tissue label and from cellular label, and that oxygen and the molecules you already have, like glucose, they're gonna fuse together and they're, they're gonna be like production of ATP, which is the adenosine triphosphate, okay? Adenosine triphosphate, okay? That ATP is a storage, that is store energy, and that energy will be used to function or to work, to, cell, to perform cellular work. Basically, that, that's the reason why uh, we use that, okay? Now, not only ATP, there is a release of energy in the form of ATP and in the form of heat, okay? So not only ATP, on in the form of heat too, okay? From now, you have to think about something. What you need to think about is, you give light energy during photosynthesis 
and it goes to the cellular secretion, it releases okay, ATP and some heat. ATP is going to be used by the organism, but heat not going to be used. Heat is going to release in the environment. So you got energy from the surrounding and you're giving heat energy to the surrounding. Okay. That looks very cool now. Okay. So the energy you got again will go to the surrounding. Okay. In the form of heat, which will not be uh, used by any organism to perform work. Or heat energy is like to maintain the body temperature that might be work full. Okay. So, uh, the heat is going to be released to the environment. That's the main thing. Not only that, ATP, heat, and you're going to produce some carbon dioxide in water. Okay. Oh, once again. Uh-oh. You got something new here. Carbon dioxide and oxygen. Have you ever think about this carbon dioxide and, uh, sorry, carbon dioxide and a water molecule here? What's going to happen? Look, the carbon dioxide and water molecule are going to be reused. Okay reused by the process of photosynthesis. These are the raw materials. In the presence of light, it's going to again produce organic molecules and it's going to be like moving to cycle. So what you can infer from this is the energy is constantly reused in the ecosystem, okay, without like no loss. So energy neither be created nor be destroyed. So energy is constantly used okay in a cyclic pattern okay you can just infer that from this figure next there are some catabolic pathways we, we just call that cellular respiration which might be aerobic anaerobic or fermentation fermentation means it's a partial degradation of sugars uh, which produce sometimes lactate or ethanol or something like that okay so uh, without the presence of oxygen there is no need of oxygen okay so the main um, concept comes from here if there was no oxygen in the earth during its creation okay like in like past ancient time if there was no oxygen means the animals like bacteria or something like the yeast they might perform fermentation because they don't need oxygen for this right so they're going to produce little bit ADB which might be workful for them to sustain their life so we can think about that that's the critical thinking Okay, next, aerobic means you need oxygen. Without oxygen, you cannot produce ATP. So, one example of anaerobic respiration is glycolysis, okay, or fermentation, you can say that too. Aerobic means you need oxygen for the cytokine cycle, cycle, you need oxygen, and for electron transport chain, you need oxygen. Okay, without that, those are not possible. Okay. So I already mentioned that cellular respiration, there are two, aerobic and anaerobic. Okay, let's look at uh, the example, the, the total like equation of the cellular respiration, what happens actually during this process. Okay, although carbohydrates, fats and proteins are, are consumed as a fuel, they have like energy, but most energy is associated with glucose. Okay, so we're going to talk about glucose here. We're just going to skip fats and proteins. Very good. Uh, you have here C6S12O6 uh, molecule. C6S12O6 means the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, their ratio is 1 to 1 ratio. Okay, so 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio because 6, 12, 6. Okay, if you divide 6, to this then it's going to come like this like this ratio so in presence of uh, oxygen okay six oxygen is going to produce six carbon dioxide and six water and with heat energy in the form of atp and heat okay energy is not only atp but energy is also atp and heat both okay so this is the thing and this process will involve some oxidation and reduction process. So before I move on to that example, I'm going to talk about other kind of example which will uh, simplify the concept of oxidation and reduction. So oxidation, 
so I already mentioned in uh, during the objectives or uh, when I talked about objectives you might uh, heard about term oil okay and you might heard about term rig right R I G rig so oil rig okay so oxidation O oxidation is losing of electron reduction is gaining of electron oil rig it's like very very good concept here okay let's see the example for NaCl in the case of NaCl what happen is Na here has there is no oxidation number zero and you can see one oxidation number here chlorine same thing here is zero but you can see here negative one okay so what happened here is the sodium okay becomes oxidized means during this process it loses electron and it becomes oxidized and it becomes reducing agent okay so sodium loses electron okay so it becomes oxidized oxidized losing electron oxidized oxidation oxidized remember okay that's the concept you need to know so it is it becomes oxidized because it loses one electron okay here chlorine has already zero but it gains one electron which is denoted by negative sign here so it becomes reduced and this process is called reduction because it gains electron and what about reducing agent and oxidizing agent the concept here is if you see oxidized or oxidation means that's going to be opposite reducing agent if you see oxidized means that is reducing agent if you see reduced that means oxidizing agent okay that's the concept here and another example here same thing here yeah it becomes oxidized it becomes reduced okay so CH4 becomes oxidized that's why it is reducing agent and O2 becomes reduced that's why it is oxidizing agent okay that's just like opposite relationship now finally our, our reaction for cellular respiration let's let's look here this is uh, our organic molecules molecule right in presence of oxygen the combustion reaction right so release of energy in the form of ATP and in the form of uh, heat and you're going to produce six mole of CO2 and six mole of H2O here okay so what happen is oxidase like oxygen here it becomes reduced means reduction occur means it uh, it uh, gains electron okay it gains electron so uh, it gain electron that is it's gonna be like negative 2 uh, here you're gonna be 0 okay the 0 negative 2 because it gains electron that's why it is reduced becomes reduced so it is oxidizing agent okay oxygen is oxidizing agent so if you look here in the case of here okay the carbon look here so you can infer from that so what happened to becomes oxidized here okay oxidized here because uh, it loses electron okay is loses electron that's why it is oxidized here so the process is oxidation and reduction that's why the combination of oxidation reduction process we call redox reaction and there is a stepwise energy harvest via NAD plus and the electron transport chain. So NAD plus is reduced or oxidized. Can you think about that? NAD plus means what? It gains or it loses electron. Okay. For example, let's say N A. D H right okay N A D H and another is N A D plus okay N A D plus has a capacity okay has the capacity N A D plus has the capacity to bind with hydrogen okay 
to form NADH, basically lies. What is the full form NAD plus nicotinamide adenine diphosphate, okay? Nicotinamide adenine diphosphate, that's uh, NAD plus, okay? If you look here, the NAD plus here, okay? So nicotinamide, which is oxidized form, okay? NAD plus, which is in oxidized form here, which is going to react with H. So it's going to be NADH. So it's going to be like Na nicotinamide, which is reduced form. So from this, what you can infer it, NAD plus is oxidized form because it's oxidation, it loses electron. NADH is reduced form because it gains electron. Okay, it gains electron, that's why it is reduced form, and this is what oxidized form. So the process is here. So reduction of NAD plus, which will give what? NADH. Oxidation of NADH gives NAD plus. Okay, so there you go, the arrow here given here. Okay, so if so the process is called dehydrogenase. So dehydrogen is here occurs here okay dehydrogenase so I already told about so reduction means nicotinamide reduced form oxidation of NADH which gives NAD plus okay if you break down NADH you're gonna get NAD plus plus 2H plus I okay if you combine NAD plus and 2H plus I and you're gonna get 2 NADH or NADH right that's the thing next how energy released or how energy controlled, okay? Let's see, uh, here you go, this is called free energy here, okay? This is free energy, okay? This is reactant. Reactant gonna go to product here, okay? If there is a big jump, okay, there will be explosive release of heat and light energy which might not be controlled in our control. So we, it might not be in our control. So it's gonna release very, very huge amount of energy. So it might not be in our control. So if the cell does like this work, we're not gonna survive, basically. Our body gonna be like source of very huge energy. So we can be more powerful. I don't know what about that. So, but in the case of cellular respiration, what happens is energy released in a stepwise process. As you see, uh, the energy go by step by step process in the case of cellular respiration. So, what happened actually is, look, the energy in the electron transport chain, what happened is from when it goes from this step to this, it releases some amount of energy. When it goes from this to this, it will release some amount of energy. When it goes from here to here, Okay, it releases some kind of energy. So the total net energy is gonna add up later on. Okay, but it's not gonna release energy at once, which might gonna be very dangerous to organism. Okay, so very important in the case of cell respiration, which occurs in what uh, stepwise process. Okay, now uh, here you go. Another thing is uh, in the case of cell respiration, uh, the enzymes play a very important role. Enzymes are the biological catalyst, uh, which uh, increases uh, the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. Okay, by lowering the activation energy, uh, then they're not gonna lower the free energy, but they're gonna lower the activation energy. Activation energy is the energy that required to uh, change react into product. That's a maximum that transition state. To pass the transition state, you need to pass. You need some activation energy. Okay, the enzyme has some active site. Uh, active site means which can access substrate. Okay, an enzyme depends on pH, depends on like concentration, like uh, and depends on some pH level and depends on temperature. The enzyme, different organisms have like different kinds of enzyme and their function depends on those temperature, concentration, and those kinds of things. So the enzyme most of the time work very actively when it's like optimum temperature and at optimum pH, right? So they work very well. So enzymes sometimes change their shape during uh, 
the tech during uh, the binding with substrate okay when this bind is substrate they form some kind of product okay so what happened is uh, look here it binds uh, with phosphate right it binds with phosphate and gives ADP right ADP good so enzyme plays very important role during the process of cellular respiration okay next the stages of cell respiration uh, is a preview. If you look here, you can think about some, uh, okay, look for this picture here. What is seeing here? Uh, what is looking here is the kind of structure here, which is mitochondria, okay? It has crystal, okay? And uh, you look glycolysis here, your first favorite step during cell respiration, then your second step here, and your third step here, okay? So, what happened is during glycolysis, glucose converted uh, into pyruvate. Okay. Not only that, before we move on to that, we need to know where it occurs. It occurs in cytosol C or cytoplasm. You can say anything. Depends on you. Okay. Cytosol or cytoplasm, it not, it's not going to occur in the mitochondria, okay? It's going to occur in cytoplasma. Today, I'm going to talk about only glycolysis, okay? And next video, I'm going to talk about this kind of thing here, okay? So, the glycolysis, to carry out this reaction, you don't need oxygen, but you need ATP, okay? You have to provide some energy to carry out this reaction, okay? If you have only glucose, it it's not gonna work okay if you have ATP then it's gonna work so you have to put uh, provide two ATP okay and then glucose gonna convert it into pyruvate okay so and it's gonna release total of four ATP okay it's gonna release four ATP but the thing is that the net gonna be only two because you already provided what how many you provided two ATP so you only get two ATP uh, as a result of that so it's like a uh, profit but not really right so we're gonna be like the profit mainly gonna be on the oxidative phosphorylation or electron transport chain or you can say chemiosmosis this process in this process you're gonna get a lot of energy okay that's that's very important here. Okay, so there is substrate level phosphorylation, which just this called a substrate level, okay, and <clears throat> it provides like little bit energy, and this is also called substrate level because there you're not gonna see more energy. But here, oxidative phosphorylation, you're gonna see a lot of energy, that's why his name is different. Okay. So let's go to brief thing here. Glycolysis harvests chemical energy by oxidizing glucose to pyruvate. Okay, so Glycolysis is a process of harvesting energy. So what happened is actually by oxidizing glucose to pyruvate, we're gonna get we're gonna get some amount of ADP, but which might not be uh, efficient or more for to function the activity of the cellular work to perform cellular work. But that's a huge huge thing. Okay, so we need ATP. So why why we're not gonna take that? We we're definitely gonna take that if it's like small in quantity or it's in high in quantity. It doesn't matter. Okay. So there are basically two phases we're gonna discuss on glycolysis. One is called energy investment phase, and another is called energy uh pay payoff phase. Okay, and uh, we're gonna calculate the net what you got from uh, the glycolysis. Okay, so what happened is during glycolysis, I already mentioned we don't need oxygen. Okay, we don't need oxygen means uh, we never gonna uh, face oxygen in this case of glycolysis. No oxygen. Okay, so we're gonna use two ATP. Okay, so two ATP we're gonna use, and what's gonna happen is we're gonna, in the case of energy investment, we invest money for example in in the case of business you invest some money in some project okay and my maybe you might gonna get like profit from that because you invest money for some purpose sometime you might not gonna get 
good profit, like in glycolysis, you're not going to get like really good, but you're going to increase some profit, okay? So that's the thing, okay? The investing ATP to produce more ATP might not be the good idea, okay? The, produ the giving two ATP to produce four ATP, that's a stupid thing. But anyway, you get some profit there too, but okay, no problem here. So in, a, in the case of energy payoff phase, what happened is the, what you invested, you're going to get some profit from that payoff phase. So you get 4 ADP, not bad. You, the net you got is 2 ADP. That's it. Not only that, okay? You're going to get pyruvate. Two, uh, two molecules of pyruvate, you're going to get that. And the water going to release, okay? And the water is going to play in a uh, very important role in, in the case of photosynthesis or something like that. The splitting of water is going to occur there. So water has very important role in human things. So that's the important. And another thing you're going to get is NADH. Uh, the NADH is uh, the storage of electrons. You know what I mean? So NADH carries electrons. So it is a great source for electron. Okay. So... It's going to be useful in the electron transport chain mainly. We're going to focus later, I told you. So here you go. The net is you got glu from glucose, you got two pyruvate and two water molecule. And four ATP formed in energy payoff phase, but two ATP was used in energy investment phase. So total uh, profit is two ATP. Okay. It's like business deal here, right? All right. So we human not only do business, but in the seller level, there is also business. Okay, give something, I'm going to give you something. All right. So here you go. The NAD plus. Here you go. The NAD plus going to combine with some uh, electron to form NADH. Yes, I told you. Okay. The oxidized state and the reduced state. I already told about that. Okay. Now uh, the glycolysis just I explained is not like that. It's going to like more very brief. Uh, uh, brief uh, thing you're going to talk about that so it's not going to be like uh, only that thing so the process is going to be like go very stepwise process and there are many process okay for example the for in the first step the glucose is going to convert it into glucose 6 phosphate uh, in the presence of hexokinase okay in the presence of hexokinase it's going to convert it into glucose 6 phosphate okay glucose 6 phosphate why because uh, there is no phosphate here. Glucose 6-phosphate means in the case of like there is a glucose and there is a phosphate. So it comes to like phosphate. Why 6? Because it's like it has the 6 position. Okay. Next. What happened is in the second position is the glucose 6-phosphate. Okay. Going to convert it into fructose 6-phosphate. Okay. So why it's going to convert into fructose 6-phosphate is a cellular work. Okay, in the presence of there is another enzyme called phosphoglucoisomerase. I told you enzymes play a very important role here. Okay, so phosphoglucoisomerase is going to convert glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate here. Okay, so from glucose, we got glucose 6 phosphate, and from glucose 6 phosphate, we got fructose 6 phosphate in our second step. Now, in third step, fructose 6-phosphate, in the presence of phosphofructokinase, is going to add one more phosphate group in its chain. Okay? You have already phosphate here, right? Or you have phosphate here too. But basically, here, you're going to add phosphate here and you're going to remove water from here. Okay? Got it? So CS2O phosphate. So no hydrogen gonna be here. Okay, it's gonna move on. Okay. So in the phosphofructose kinase enzyme plays very important role to convert fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-biphosphate. Now in the in a four step, like in the in the fourth step of glycolysis, what happened actually is the fructose 1,6-biphosphate. Why I say 1,6? Because uh, one phosphate group attached to the one first position and another attached to the sixth position. That's why one six biphosphate. Why biphosphate? Because there are two phosphate groups. Okay, that's easy to understand like that way. 
So in presence of aldose, aldole, sorry, aldolase, that's another enzyme. In presence of aldolase, what actually happen is, it's going to produce two kind of thing here. Okay, two thing. So one is called dihydroxyacetone phosphate and another going to be glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Okay, then they're going to switch their structure. So there might be like isomerase occur. Isomerase means same structure. Look, same structure, right? They have like same kind of, like same formula, same kind of formula, but they have like same, like different, sorry, I said same structure, sorry for that, different structure. Why different structure? Because the bonding phosphate is in different position. So they have like same molecular formula, okay? Same molecular formula, but in the different structure. One phosphate group attached here, another phosphate group attached here, okay? So that's the, the isomerase, we say isomerase there, okay? But both of them say, like they have like different kinds of function here. What happened is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate uh, in presence of triose phosphate dehydrogenase is going to convert, okay, uh, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-biphosphoglycerate because 1,3-biphosphate glyceraldehyde because in like same chain but you just add here phosphate group that's it no different there okay so you produce that so next is when what happened to 1,3 by phosphoglycerate after that in the presence of phosphoglycero uh, glycerokinase another enzyme uh, that will work here and here you go another thing like ATP is like releasing in each and every step I didn't mention ever but ATP is like releasing in each and every step Okay, you release NADH here, you release some kind of ATP here on top here, right? So at, from ATP, you need ATP to produce ADP. So ADP gonna work like for phosphate, right? Okay, everything gonna be like one by one. So, so three phosphoglycerate, two phosphoglycerate. So, so what happened actually is one three by phosphate gonna convert it into, I told you in number seven, in, in presence of that into, phosphoglycerate, three phosphoglycerate, only one phosphate group over there. And that uh, three phosphoglycerate uh, in presence of phosphoglycerotes is going to convert it into two phosphoglycerate, okay, two phosphoglycerate. And finally, uh, another thing is two phosphoglycerate in, uh, in presence of enolase is going to convert into phospho, phosphoenol, phosphoenol pyruvate, okay. In, it's going to convert into phosphonyl pyruvate. Phosphonyl pyruvate going to convert in, uh, into pyruvate in, by the pyruvate kinase during that process. 2 ATP produce 2 ATP. And here you go. You have a pyruvate here, which is going to be uh, very important, which is going to play a very important role in citric acid cycle. Okay. Which is going to play a very important role in citric acid cycle. So the pyruvate going to enter to the membrane through some kind of transport protein. And it's going to release CO2 and coenzyme A. And from so I don't know. So, uh, so its process is very difficult to understand. But the glycolysis itself, if you talk like general on surface level, and it's easy to understand. But if you go like one by one step, the energy releasing, the harvesting its stages, then it's like, look, the structure, okay, it's very difficult. So, what I'm going to uh, tell you is if you know this concept, uh, you might. Uh, not be uh, very uh, don't focus on deeply on this one. I'm not saying that don't read this you, you can read that you, if you understand this very good if you don't understand this at least understand the overall process of glycolysis uh, which might gonna help you to understand the second and third uh, reaction here and who's gonna help you to understand the energy releasing phase uh, in the case of here so be careful on that okay uh, I'll talk uh, about uh, static acid cycle and uh, electron transport chain in my next lecture thank you for watching see you soon guys bye bye